Hello, all you wonderful people in YouTube land and an ever increasing number of you in podcast heights. We are the Nonprofits, a show where we discuss current events and social issues from a skeptical, skeptical, skeptical humanist perspective. And we're going with that. We're not going to edit that out because we, we have to pay for our sins in this lifetime. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm Johnny Angel, or at least I was. And we've got some fabulous people here with us today. We've got Cynthia McDonald, who, when she is not here, sits on the other end of a party emergency hotline. We've got our special guest, Kenneth Leonard, that friend who always knows a lot about that thing you just heard about today. <laughs> and uh, Martin. Hi. <laughs> I show up here sometimes. <laughs> now and again, he's here. And then uh, we've got other people here. You're not going to see them because we haven't done that. But we've got our fabulous uh, production crew who are watching lurking in the background and some other lurkers who are nonprofits who like to watch us while we put on a show and they're always welcome to be here with us. Uh, we come to you courtesy of the atheist community of Austin, a 501 C three dedicated to the separation of religion and government and promoting positive atheism. You can find us lots of places. You can find us on our fan run discord at tiny.cc slash ACA discord. Although there's a new link that I think is going to be down there in the description. I thought there was a new one. Uh, perhaps look in our description. You'll find it chat with us on our fan run Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash nonprofits live. You can tell us what you like, and what you don't like in the comments you do anyway. Uh, you can email us at nonprofits at atheist-community.org. No dash or hyphen needed. Or use it, but uh, don't use it. You can like, subscribe, click upon the bell-shaped icon with your cursor or with your touch screen to get notifications about our latest videos. And you can support us on Patreon if you have any disposable income at patreon.com slash the nonprofits. If you already shop on Amazon, you can use Amazon to support the ACA. Merely select Atheist Community of Austin as your charitable organization of choice on Amazon Smile. Your purchase price will not increase, but Amazon will send the ACA a small donation with every purchase. If you already use Amazon, that is, and there's reasons why you might not. But enough about all that. How you doing, hosts? How's everyone? How's everyone's week been? Ooh. It was it, it was Dan Wright specular this week. Uh, mm. Specular, know. specular, love it. Yeah, new word. I like it. It's skeptical and it. secular. Specular, yeah. specular. It covers yep. all the bases. Yeah. Yep. Did I, it's did it's I, even more inclusive, is what that word is. Yeah. Oh, don't yeah. Worry. Let's, let's talk about in inclusiveness. <laughs> ness, ness, love ness. it. Yeah. Hey, and ultimately, you want to be inclusive. So, Indeed. Yeah, I'm all for it. Indeed. Uh, anyone here not in favor Speculate. of inclusiveness? Raise your hand. Thought so. Uh, Thought Woodhouse so. is raising his hand in the background, but uh, yeah, that's my well, cat. That's Typical. because cats are not inclusive and they're jerks. It's science. That's true. Cats are very exclusive. Yes. Yes. It's science. Well, let me ask you more directly. Cynthia, what have you been up to this week? I've been a social working. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, been actually working with my organization to get folk vaccinated. I have uh, worked at least about two events uh, these past uh, weeks, mm -hmm. uh, you know, going in, in the community, making sure that people get their first and second dosages. Or if they're doing the one shot and you're done, we get them, you know, stabbed. It's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. And you no, know, <laughs> making sure that they sit there 15 to 30 minutes, sit your ass down, make mm -hmm. sure you okay. And mm -hmm. I'm happy to report that no one has, you know, passed out after getting their vaccines. Um, and so yeah, far, people are doing pretty well with them. I think that this past weekend, we vaccinated over 400 people. So Holy smokes. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, we're, and we're looking to vaccinate some more. And I'll be out again. 
this weekend helping to vaccinate more folk. Thank you for your service, Cynthia McDonald. How about Doing you, Martin? Doing the Lord's work. Doing the Lord's work. Martin, I'm <laughs> skipping you, Kenneth Leonard. That's fine. <laughs> but I'm saving you for last. Martin? I've been uh, I've been enjoying my life. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I I live mostly in the background of the uh, ACA production, doing audio stuff. But uh, I, I really enjoy my nonprofits appearances. Yeah. Um, I've also been uh, on Ethan Michaels' show. Um, I think I can say that here um, on your friend, the uh, your friendly neighborhood athe atheist friend of the platform. Show. Friend, friend of the, the show. show. Yes. Yeah. Yes. A, a Not a plug. Intimate. Just friend of the show. Yeah. He's an he's an NP intimate. He is. Um, but yeah, we had some very interesting discussions uh, yesterday on his live show. Yesterday being Tuesday with this show airing on Sunday, but we're That's recording right. on Wednesday. That's right. And uh, other than that, I've just been working my day job. I work in a grocery store and it's always chaos. And yeah, I love it. So there we are. You know, Martin really is the hardest working nonprofit of, the, of us all. Don't do and this to me. It's true. <laughs> he, he works hard for for us so we don't have to. I, I, I was going to say something else, but I don't want to pay the copyright for it. So, right. uh, Well, and, just know yeah. that we do treat Martin right. We do. We do. He's he's not our private dancer. He's not dancing for money. He doesn't do what we want him to do. But so, so, I want to go back to you, Cynthia. This is a little chaotic, this is a little chaotic today. Where, yeah. where, are we, where are we going, Johnny? Draw, draw, draw your production going. meeting. <laughs> Next month, we're going to talk all about this. No, Cynthia, you've been on some shows recently. I want to hear more about it. And then I want to give extra extra time to Kenneth because I feel like I'm just skipping over back and forth, keeping the people waiting. Putting You've been you've been doing some shows. We talked about it beforehand, but you didn't mention it. You just talked about your social work. Yeah, because that's important. It is. But, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> oh, this uh, did on Your Friendly Neighborhood Atheist Thank you. Uh, was on, we did uh, the Black Nonbelievers Roundtable yeah. uh, with uh, the president and founder of the Black Nonbelievers. Uh, you talk Mandisa about Mandisa Thomas? Thomas? I am speaking about the Mandisa Thomas, also that when you show. Google, yes, friend of the show, friend of the mm -hmm. ACA, and when you literally Google Black Atheist, her photo comes up. So yes, she yes, yeah, her. Okay. her. So and that was that was a great uh, the, that was a great roundtable. The Mandisa the Mandisa Thomas. Thomas. If you're Indeed. out there, we want you back on when you have some free time, if you have some free time. Um, okay, we're forgetting something. Oh yes, Kenneth Leonard. Kenneth oh, Leonard. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming back and being on the show with me this time because I wanted I to be on the last time, but here I, I am so now. Fun. I had so much fun. I couldn't wait to come back. All right. So happy to be here. You're everywhere right now in a good I'm way. Doing a lot of things. Uh, yeah. I keep uh, getting asked to come places, which is amazing. I haven't worn out the welcome yet, but I, yeah, no. over on Ethan's channel quite a bit, uh, mm -hmm. doing more with, uh, with the ACA. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got my own little channel kind of plugging along. Uh, yeah. Having, it's having a great time. It's yeah. growing. And we're, and we're happy to have you back and we hope that you have you back again after this but you know we had to we'll have to book you soon because you are you are climbing climbing the charts oh gee well yeah i'm just i'm just happy to be you know hopefully doing useful useful stuff i i, I it's still shocking me that people actually watch and consume my stuff <laughs> so it's it's great yeah they're consuming mass quantities we <laughs> like your stuff mr leonard all right enough of this pleasantry let's get on with the show shall we um, the links are going to be in the description. That's my job to make sure that they're down there. Uh, feel free to pause the video, use your finger or the scroll wheel on your mouse to go down there and click upon the expand and you can see all the links. Um, check them out for yourselves. Uh, pause the video, come back and then come back to hear what we're talking about. Okay, we're going to cover some topics. They're not easy topics today. There's a lot of nastiness in the news lately. <clears throat> Uh, first off, we're going to talk about the Georgia shooter. Uh, there was another shooter uh, in Boulder between when we set this uh, docket and and today. Uh, we won't be talking about that. Maybe we will in the future. Uh, the Georgia shooter, we're going to talk about unhealthy attitudes towards sex with regard to that. Um, the shooter, uh, racism and fetishization of Asian Americans and the way that churches the church has responded to um the the shooter 
the one that he was a member of. Well said, Johnny. Um, the second thing we're going to be looking at is uh, reparations. Uh, the difficulties in making that happen, some attempts at reparations, what constitutes reparations, um, and different proposals that have been bouncing around uh, the political sphere recently. We're going to then talk about, well, vax holes, the folks who are refusing to get vaccines, the politics and social issues surrounding vaccines. We've talked about it before, but it keeps on developing. It keeps on mutating, if, it, if you will, the topic. And then I finally, there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got a million of them. We got, we're going to be talking about Mar is it Marilla or, or Maria? Marks Ricker are looking I back. Marilla. I think it's Marilla. I mm -hmm. think it's yeah. Marilla. Yeah. I think it's Marilla. I don't, I've never met a Marilla. So pardon if we have any in the, in the, uh, in the audience, you know, comment below on how to pronounce that name. Marilla. Yeah, if we're wrong, tell us. <laughs> yeah, please. Which because you you're, will. you're so polite usually. Folks out there in YouTube land, tell us tell yeah, us the, if we're pronouncing it wrong. The comment um, section is great. We yeah, really do appreciate totally it. Totally G-rated. Totally. Keep, <laughs> when keeping it real goes wrong. All yeah. right, let's 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 start let's start with the first one. Happy days are here again. There's a Georgia shooter, and uh, who was going to take this article? I think that was actually I, Kenneth. Right? Yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Right. So we picked up from the the W A B E that's the, the NPR affiliate down there in in Hotlanta um reporting on this that uh and and I'm sure most people tuning in have, have heard about this it's been everywhere in the news uh this this white gunman was charged Wednesday with uh a week ago now with killing eight people at three massage parlors um so this is a 21 year old guy who told the police uh, and incidentally, the police said that he, he had a bad day. I don't know if anybody heard about that, that, yeah. uh, he, him going in and shooting up these places was, uh, motivated by his, his sex addiction. Um, and the authority said that he was acting out against what he perceived as sources of temptation. Um, so it's, uh, it's a mess. Um, yeah. I mean, the, yeah. So one of the uh, one of the, a Georgia House representative, uh, B. Wynn, said that the shootings appeared to be this is a quote at the intersection of gender based violence, misogyny and xenophobia. And I think that that pretty much sums up where it. we stand. Yeah, it, it's yeah. it's a fucking nightmare. Um, and of course, there's one ingredient that uh, that was left out of that, which is the sort of overwhelming oppressive presence of evangelical influences on this, this young man's life. Um, so uh, let's start yeah. there. Let's start there because, you know, we're a product of the ACA. We have a lot of focus on religion and the way religion can corrupt perfectly normal, healthy situations and, and turn it sour. Um, let's talk about the religious aspect. I want to talk about the religion. I want to talk about the racism. I want to talk about, uh, all of it, but let's start with the religion aspect. You know, did anyone go ahead and look up the church? Did anyone look into what does this, because he belonged to a church, right? Yeah. And his father was a youth minister or a youth, a youth leader. pastor. Youth yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Did anyone look into the church? What kind of a church were they? They were, they were Baptist, but did they have yeah. any nasty things to say about, uh, I don't think they had anything nasty to say about Asian Americans, but what about sex? Did anyone find anything on that? Well, I, I, one quick thing about the church, it's the Crab Apple First Baptist Church. Um, they have, have since cut ties with this young man. They, they issued a statement saying that they've completed the process of church discipline and removed him from church membership. And the reason they gave for this was that they can no longer affirm that he is truly a regenerate believer in Jesus Christ, was what they said. So I think we can all go home. Uh, justice yeah. has been done. That's right. Right. Right, no, no true. Now. Yeah. No true crab apple, huh? Is that Precisely what this is? That. Yeah. Precisely. Yes. That. Yeah. Yes. The That's no true exactly crab apple is. fallacy. But, I, but yeah. I thought that we are all sinners and who are we to judge if a sin is too much? Isn't it God's place to, to judge whether or not he's a suitable crab apple Christian? Crab, crab appleian. I, I don't know. Crab, crab well, I like it. I do like crab appleian. I kept thinking about Krabappelian, I believe yeah. is the preferred 
nomenclature. The yep. I, I that's right. I was thinking a lot today about the the sort of built-in defense mechanisms that these churches have to insulate them from real criticism because it's just they've said that what this guy did is antithetical to everything they stand for, but like, is it really? Uh, um, well, what do they stand for? Did anyone go to their website? Because I did. Oh, please do tell what is on their website. Uh, I wanted to hear about, I wanted to see sermons. I, I looked up sermons, Crab Apple, mm. Baptist Church, whatever it was, and they're gone. You can find a link to it, yeah. but when you click on the website, it says it's it's been taken from the internet. All of their basic principles are gone, but there is a, uh, I'm sorry, the specifics of their religion of their church is gone, but you can find a prepared statement of beliefs, uh, one through, you know, 15, 20 different little yeah. bullet points. And here's something. Can I read this to you? Please. All, uh, section three of the fall of man, that we believe that mm. man was created in holiness under the law of his maker, but by voluntary transgression fell from that holy and happy state, in consequences of which all mankind are now sinners, not by constraint, but choice, being by nature utterly void of that holiness required by the law of God, positively inclined to evil, and therefore under just condemnation to eternal ruin without defense or excuse, and there's a whole shitload of Bible passages there, mm. uh, goes on about the righteous and the wicked, and it pretty much says those that continue in, in impenitence and unbelief in his sight are, are wicked and under the curse, and, uh, and then talks about extremism and all kinds of stuff like that. But yeah, that's probably the cleaned up version of what well, this yeah. church stands for. And the thing is, that, like, of course, this church isn't up at the pulpit saying, you know, no. go blow away people if they, you know, tempt you. But the the sort of toxic swirl of all the other nonsense and garbage is built into this story. Um, and it, you cannot separate it. So if if you, like this kid, are a kid, I mean, he's 21, he's, he's a grown ass man. But if you grow up in a, in a church environment where you're told, um, you know, as long as, as long as you're able to hear this kind of stuff, that you are completely like, I mean, biblically from a Baptist church in the deep South, I mean, this is like, you know, very typical Baptist Calvinist stuff that you, I mean, you are saturated with sin. There is nothing that you can do to make God happy. It's purely like the work of grace coming from Jesus that you're even allowed to get into God's zone to get close to him. So if, if, if you are just inundated with this idea that you are a sinful piece of shit and that the only reason why God loves you is because he tortured his son so he didn't have to torture you. I mean, as a, as a foundational starting point, you're bound to be confused about a great many things. Um, yeah, so it's 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 a it's a mess. And I mean, and and the the whole sex addiction thing is is a problem um, because there's this there's multiple layers of of this in the story of this this guy thinking of temptation and thinking of desire and his sex drive and various impulses as being these things that are outside of and separate from him that he's sort of under attack you know as a, as a sexual being um to the point that i mean i don't want to diagnose the guy but i mean there's clearly some sort of like psychotic break happens i mean it, it, this is such a tragic story on every possible level um well, it if it's okay for me to interject just a little bit, um, and this is not completely in my notes, but hey, it's me. But I was really <laughs> actually just thinking about this whole purity culture that mm. we deal with oftentimes, um, uh, specifically in church, Western church, right? Um, I don't know if any of you all got a chance to see, there was a, a video that was floating around in the, in the social of the medias, where there was a young man who was in uh, a gym and he was uh, supposed, I, I, he stopped like bench pressing or, or whatever. He was doing something. He was, he was uh, weight lifting in some he's, type of vernacular, but he getting, stopped. Getting a pump. He, which one? He was getting a pump. Getting yeah, a pump. he was getting a pump. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. Okay, Wicked. that's what yeah. they call it nowadays. Great. That's right. So he was getting a pump, right? You know, uh, I'm just going to demonstrate this real quick. 
you know. Yeah, Look there you that. go. Look at that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. Stay we healthy. believe in healthy. We believe healthy. in healthy working. We do. Yes, we do. So Much anywho, healthy. Sure. And um, while he was gaining a pump, he stopped uh, because he was too distracted by other young ladies with yep. yoga pants on. Yep. Oh, and, that video. Yeah. Yes. I, remember, yeah I remember this. I know the one, one you're TikTok. talking about. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, and Is that real? Time, was yeah, that real, do you think? I do. Yeah. I, 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 it seemed I like, it. you know, yeah, yeah kind of teenager Christian cringe. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but the thing about it was is that, and you know what, to be honest, I think I, I remember when this was posted, and I remember, I believe, Kenneth, you uh, commented on that particular uh, video as well. I forgot I exactly did. what you said, but you did. I, but Yeah, you did. But I grew anyway. up in that. I grew up in that culture. We, we all signed purity pledges. I knew, I knew people who had their first kiss at the altar at their weddings, and it was this, like, thing. And it was the parents more than the kids. The parents would look at it as this point of pride of being like, I kept my kids' genitals on lock. Mm. And, yeah. it, like, that's, that's not incredible. super weird and creepy. Yeah, um, like, how is that normal to people? I just... I don't know. I, but, and you know, yeah. but even with this young man that was, uh, you know, going through a whole change, like you saw like in his face that he was going through a whole change just because he was doing his damnedest not to look at the lay days with the yoga pants on, saying that I, I'm, I'm doing my best to keep myself for my craft when for the, future the Lord yeah. Yes, for my when the Lord did, did, did blesses me. I, I'm I'm not saying that he said it like that, but you know I'm I'm going back for Jesus. to my own Christian. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Cynthia, I do remember this now because because <laughs> he said the thing about how he's not looking at the asses because that's not his future wife's ass, and I was like, how do you know? How do, how do you know? know? Right, yeah, right. I, 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 I think I saw that comment that lady too, yeah. in those <laughs> yoga pants to put that juicy butt in front of you so you could go talk to her. You right. Know? Right, and I'm and well, I'm, I'm so tempted to actually put a song in here, but I won't because of copyright. But anyway, but the thing about it is, I, I did have a point. The thing about it is, <laughs> is that you you have oftentimes these, and I and I sat through them too. The these sermons that are telling people to keep themselves chaste, but in but it's done in such a way where we're ignoring humanity. You know, I mean, base, basically, the the crux of humanity is we're we're not really clean things. We are hyperly sexualized type things. I mean, you know, we yep. and and it's a reason why sex feels good. Well, at least it's supposed to be. You know, I hope to find out one day. You know, no, no, yeah. I'm I'm still working on it. But you know, but the thing about it is. <laughs> Let you know if I ever figure it out. Right. You know, especially since it's not Thursday. But the thing about right. it is, is that, you know, we're constantly in, in these particular churches, they're constantly pumping these uh, kids' heads with this really yeah. unhealthy way to look at sex. And to the point where I'm not surprised, shocked, even though I'm not condoning what he did, mm-hmm. but I'm not, I'm surprised on how, you know, one can develop these psychosis and really unhealthy relationships in their head when it comes to sex. Right. It's not a balanced, uh, I keep on using these terrible words, holistic. Okay, fine. Holistic view of the human, right? Mm -hmm. It's this view of the human as a disgusting creature who only through uh, a sacrifice 2000 years ago is made even remotely digestible for God, right? Mm -hmm. And you're fallen and repulsive and only through God's words and God's deeds are you are you acceptable. So he probably had a, a battle with himself at all times and turned it towards uh, the, the the outer world and and these spas and who were populating these spas. Uh, a lot of these folks were Asian American or Asian women, right? Mm-hmm. Which goes into the other aspect of this is this hyper fetishization of Asian Americans or of Asian women specifically, right? Mm -hmm. I had an article about that. So you did. I did. Um, And this particular article was about us. It was uh, specifically entitled sexual object, objectification, objectification of women. Easy for you to say. 
Right, exactly. Advances to theory and research. Um, and it was written by people. It'll, the show notes below people so that you'll be able to actually take a look at it. But I, I pulled out like a couple of um, quotes from it that I wanted to um, share with the audience and, and the panelists, if, if you would, if you would allow. Um, so one of the quotes is, uh, so often intersects with women's uh, other social uh, sociocultural identities, such as sexual orientation, race, ethnicity, and social class, to form unique sets of media portrayals and experiences to subgroups. For example, lesbian or same-sex female uh, relationship have become increasingly sexualized, exploited, and used in the media to, to, uh, to target some male fantasies of being involved sexually with two or more women at the same time. In addition, the sexual exploitation and victimization of African-American women from the days of slavery to present has led to media images and stereotypes types of Black women as sexual aggressors and sexual savages. And then it goes on to say, in contrast, Asian women are often portrayed in the media as sexually sub uh, subservient, childlike, and exotic. Furthermore, women in lower class positions are often co um, considered gross, overly sexed, untamed, crude and deserving of sexual exploitation and aggression yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it, it, it's it's fucking it's dehumanizing it's yeah. it's taking these people Absolutely. and it's reducing them to a set of of, of characteristics for the purposes of exploitation it, it right. is it, i mean it, that i can't think of a better word than dehumanizing it's just stripping yeah. everything away from from these people it's um it's like um, if you uh, if you assume that all people of a certain you know racial group, ethnic group, or, or whatnot um, have all of these traits, then really you'd rather date somebody with those traits than date somebody of that group. But the assumption is you know that everybody in that group has those traits, and mm. you know that's that's one aspect of racism in a nutshell, or or one aspect of how it uh, how it works. It's kind of way into our into our thought processes, but. Yeah, it's, we were it really doesn't have any meat when you try to follow it through, you know, it's no. we're individuals. We were talking about this before the show, and I didn't want to lose. I didn't want to lose this thought. And that was, it's okay to have a type of person that you're interested in. It's okay to be attracted to different kinds of people and to have in the back of your head a fetish. We don't want to kink shame, right? But mm -hmm. I think the big thing is, you have to also balance that these, that everyone is a person, that they're not typecast, that a certain uh, physical type, racial type, whatever you want to call it, you know, ethnic type, phenotypical expression does not mean that they have anything in common other than a certain set of physical traits. Uh, that that these people that you might think of as this ideal sexual partner, this highly tempting sexual partner. They're not cut all from the same cloth. And so um, you go online and you go to porn sites and people will look for specific kinds of pornography. Okay. We, this is something that I said before was you might be really into German guys, <clears throat> right? But does that mean that you're going to assume that all German guys are exactly the same or, or Asian women? Are you going to treat them as just a sex object? as merely an object for your fantasy? Or are you going to compartmentalize that in some way? I mean, I'm not gonna deny that people do not have fetishization, that they do not have objectification in their sexual desires. But you have to keep yourself under control, people. You have to know that your Asian American doctor is your doctor, not your imaginary girlfriend, right? Uh, yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's the it's just the whole thing about again putting it into perspective that people are still people humans are still humans like and we're we're and and regardless of whatever your kink is or your attraction is that's one thing but it's a whole different thing when you're actually regulate uh regulating people into a thing 
you know, I believe that uh, Dr. King talked about thingifying a thing instead. Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes that when you do that, you're taking the human, um, the human element out of that particular person there that uh, or group. And, and I think that that's oftentimes what's, you know, caused, like, even when we're seeing, like, these particular crimes being done, is that we're taking the human um, element out of, you know, the people themselves, and we're just regulating to, you are this, this. Right. And so we're going to treat you as such. And, and so we're also seeing in the news a thingification, an, other eye, an othering of people. Uh, racially motivated hostility is on the rise since the beginning of this pandemic. I'm sure that your research has has turned this up. Does anyone want to speak to that? Because I've found plenty of plenty of material on this. Well, there's I mean, there's been a spike in in reported hate crimes against mm -hmm. Asian American people. Um, there's I mean, that's been all over the news the last mm -hmm. the last week and and beyond. Um, I mean, certainly the the rhetoric of the previous administration, you know, talking about like the China virus doesn't help. Um, uh, you know. I just that that makes me cringe every time I hear it, you know, yeah. even just citing it as as a um, something that somebody else said, you know, we're not calling it that we're just right. talking about it. Right. But still, exactly. it's just I just get that physical reaction. You know, I'm like, can you not? Well, yeah, because there's there's, <laughs> yeah. there's no there's no good that can come of that. Right. right. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't do anything except reinforce an already racist narrative. Right. You know? yeah. And that's right. that's the people who the people who use it, who put it on their clothes. That's exactly what they want to do with it. I mean, especially when it's coming from leadership. Right. You yep. know, like oftentimes when you're hearing like these particular tropes coming from leadership, that makes it uh, you're giving permission to do that. You know, I mean, like and I think that that's even something that and even though like he's no longer 45 did a lot, you know, right. when it, when it yeah. came to actually, um, you know, not necessarily policing some of the things that he says. And, and I think that, you know, I don't necessarily have an issue with, uh, speaking your mind and speaking freely. I mean, obviously we're in this space, right. But, but, you know, but when you're in leadership specifically, you still, should be more conscious about the things that actually come out of your mouth, you know, for the simple fact of the matter is, is that now that yes, you do have a rise in hate crimes, uh, you know, against a specific group of people. And, and I mean, like, and I even think that um, there was another person from the view. Didn't she just get read for filth not too long ago because she just, she said, just said that the other day on McCain? the view. Yeah. Megan McCain. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. always getting into trouble on the view. Yeah, you know, she, well, it did come from China. I mean, but again, but it listen, it is does called it, COVID. Does it help anybody? No, that's, it doesn't. That's the thing. Does it help it, anybody by it by identifying well, it, it as such? Exactly. I mean, I mean, yeah. like regardless of where it came from, it's here. We're experiencing it, and that is not the name of it. Okay, so instead of you know, let's deal with the actual issue at hand not where it came from, but the actual virus itself, you know, it doesn't necessarily yeah. matter where it actually originated from. And to start to, you know, put into these particular blames on people, I think this is, is atrocious. And I think we'll, please go ahead, Kenneth. I think it's built into the, the culture and yeah. uh, even the theology of specifically like white evangelical mm -hmm. America. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you, when you otherize yeah. your problems, when, when the issue isn't that you don't have, you know, control over your sexual impulses, but it's that they're tempting me over there when right. it's not, we're not handling our virus very well here in the United States when it's no, it's the China virus over there. You know, we, we, the absolving yourself of personal responsibility, scapegoating is it's, it's built into the theology. I mean, remember that in, in, in Christianity, what you do is not how you get saved. It's what you believe because you are sinful and you're going to be forgiven for it. If you just believe the right stuff. Unless you're Catholic, so, faith and works. Well, that's true. That's true. I'm talking about those evangelical guys, though, yeah. like like our yeah. our, uh, yeah. our spa shooter guy. Um, the, the, there's a there's an othering that's been going on. It's been going on since the very beginning, I think, of humanity. And it's these kind of events, these yeah. kind of phases of society, is really really brings it out. We saw people of darker skin, not African Americans necessarily, but people of the Southeast Asia. Right, India, Pakistan, those those areas around around September 11th, people getting attacked. Right? Oh yeah, 
you might be an Indian American, but you're oh, yeah. somehow getting blamed for the actions of some religious extremists, some Muslim re religious extremists. Yeah. But yeah. close enough, you're from India, you have brown skin. So therefore, mm -hmm. you need to pay the price because right. I'm afraid of all people who aren't exactly like me. And that's super tribalism. And it's not even regressive. It's like we've never, ever gotten out of that phase as a, as right. a, as a species. Yeah, we, we well, have a, easy. we have a really bad tendency to start hurting everyone into one particular aspect when one thing happens, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. it is. Um, yeah, and it's been something that we, we've been doing since humanity was a thing. Yeah, we've yeah. got it, some. It, yeah. I'm sorry. Was, it's, ahead, it's, it's just it's just too easy. That's I mean, it's just just using these these terrible heuristics. Um, I, to, to your point, Johnny, I remember seeing this with, with people who were, um, Sikhs after nine 11, like you're saying, right. you know, some guy with a turban getting harassed, going down the street, this guy's, this guy's not even Muslim. Not that, yeah. not that a Muslim guy should be getting harassed. It's just like, you, you'd see people yelling and it's like, what are you doing? It's like, oh, well, that's one of them. One of what? It's like, wh right. where are you getting your information? It's like yeah. these snap judgments yeah. and, and, and being thoughtful and knowing things takes work. Right. So, so we've, we've got some really good articles about this. We... You can all blame me, folks in the audience. I think I overbooked us on topics today. Um, we've got a lot of interesting links you should check out. They're in the description talking about, you know, fetishization of, you know, Asian American girlfriends, you know, Asian American girlfriends take on yellow fever was, uh, yeah. was one of them. Uh, lawmakers, Asian American lawmakers talking about violence against Asian Americans. We've got more stuff about the religious uh, proclivities of, of the shooter uh, the way that the police have handled it, the way the church has responded to the shooting. And so I would encourage you all go down there in the description. We're going to be there. We typically are on, on Sunday. We're recording this on a Wednesday, but on Sunday, a lot of us are going to be there in the live chat. Go ahead, read it, go in the comments. We'll respond to you. If you're really nice to us, we'll respond to you. Uh, but there's a lot to be talked about with this. And this is this, this topic of conversation, unfortunately is going to keep on coming up. I watched a Stephen Colbert episode recently, where I think it was yesterday, and he was like, this is the stuff that I say whenever there's another mass shooting. And I talk about how I talk about how I talk about the same stuff with every single mass shooting. It's never yeah. time to talk about gun control. It's never a time to talk about blah, 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 blah. But mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to say this, but I'm not jinxing anything. We will come back to this topic at some point in the future when another fucking mass shooting happens mm -hmm. and there's another wrinkle with some kind of religious extremism, some kind of mental illness, some sort of gun control or lack of gun control gone wild, we'll come back to it. Um, so um, that's awful. Did, did you see with the White House when they went out to put the flag at half mast that no. it, oh yeah, this is when White House staff went out to put the flag down to half mast because the Atlanta shooting, they went out there and they were like, oh, right. It's already at half mass because of the last shooting that happened. That right. that, that was a thing that happened in America mm. this week. Right. We, well, we're continuously on thoughts and prayers. T's and P's, yep. baby. T's, T's and P's. And P's. Yep. Thoughts and prayers. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think that thoughts and prayers can solve our next topic. I think just thoughts, a little bit of prayers. We're going to talk about reparations. Woohoo. Yeah, mm. we're the official. We're, this is the commission, right? This is the official. <laughs> this yeah. is it. Um, yeah, I this think, is the uh, this yeah. is the council on reparations, and whatever we decide here will be enacted into law. Pretty Martin's, much. Immediately. Martin's thinking. Uh, me and me and Kenneth are praying, and right. Cynthia is going to take us into this topic. Yes. Yeah. So we're starting off with this particular article. I believe it's called Catholic Order Commits to Making $100 million, $100 million in slavery reparations. Sorry, I had to do that, people. So basically what had happened was is that there was a group that actually got together with the Jesuit priests that pledged that they were going to actually raise $100 million for the descendants of people 
people enslaved by the Catholic order as part of a new racial and reconciliation initiative in the US. So uh, what they were proposing is that, I believe that the uh, the group that got together with the Jesuits is called the GU 272 Descendants Association. And they were actually responding to the 272 uh, enslaved men, women, and children that were sold by the Jesuit owners of Georgetown University to plantation owners in Louisiana. So basically the selling, and this happened in 1838. So the right. selling of this particular, um, of these uh, lot of enslaved men, women, and children actually saved the university because it was swirling on down, y'all. So when it was swirling on down, they said, hey, I know, let's, let's get some people together and sell them. You know what I'm saying? They so, didn't you know, say people. The they didn't say people because sure they didn't, didn't think of them as true. people. Sure didn't. I'm sorry. Let's get some property together that has arms and legs and sell them so that we can go ahead and save our university. So um, the Catholic Church now is in the process of actually, um, you know, pledging that they're actually that they're going to be raising this money, even though they already got the money. Uh, PPP. PPP. Gold bars. Gold bars. Uh -huh. Gold press latinum. Anywho. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, now, as far as like, you know, how, what they're going to do with the money, how it's going to be dispensed, um, you know, things of that nature. Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure. But uh, one of the things that um, I was even looking at as far as like the money amount itself, I, I, you know, I put a, a particular Mogloom argue, um, uh, I'm sorry, article that actually unpacks that that was going over a podcast that was actually unpacking the cost of true of the true cost of slavery, and uh, the economic value of four million slaves in 1860. This is how many slaves that were actually emancipated um, after the Civil War was on average a thousand dollars per person, or about four billion dollars in today's dollars. That would be as much as $42 trillion, accounting for inflation and compounding interest. And there were literally Black, also at that particular time, there were literally slave-backed securities, slave-backed yeah. securities. So like you had insurance companies that, um, um, that uh, slave owners were able to uh, buy uh, policy on their slaves. So just in case something happened, they would still get paid, right? Uh, kind of like, you know, what you do with your car. Why not slave your house? I'm sorry, uh, insure your house, insure your car, insure your slave. Yeah, it's a great thing. And, you know, and we're not even going to talk about the lost wages, that you know, you know, mm. slaves were um, were were not able to to get, and 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 there was another estimate that you know, slaves who were picking cotton uh, were not paid up to twenty point three trillion dollars in wages. You know, so so my whole thing is is oh, since we're on the commission now, we're in the commission right now. My I think advice, that's right. I think that's cool. right. Yes. Cool. So my advice specifically to the Catholic Church or the Jesuits who are working with this particular um, uh, uh, the, the GU 272 uh, Descendants Association is take that money and lobby Congress. Because there is no way that you're going to take $100 million and be able to actually pay reparations for what it's really worth. The only entity that actually can do it justice and do it properly, and especially when it comes to closing the racial wealth gap, is the federal government. And, yeah. and and I know that we're going to go get into this more because we also have like, you know, other initiatives that are, you know, trying to be done as far as like on the local level when it comes to reparations. Well, I wanted to, I really wanted to, to talk with you about that because we were talking about the show uh, before the show and we were talking about reparations and and some of the articles that I found talked about localized reparations. And you had said, that's not reparations. That's right. Okay. It's not. <laughs> so if, if I could talk about some of the different programs that were in, that were in the works, and then we can talk about how they meet the qualification for reparations and how they don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got, I think this was, where was it? Uh, in the Washington post. Was that, no, that wasn't where I found it. Um, Maybe it was the Washington Post where I found that material. And it was talking about um, several groups have found success pursuing restitution mm. at the local level. 
Um, the conditions for that were an institution culpable in the past that's still in existence, a discrete and identifiable population able to show that they or their ancestors suffered harm and a community to fight on the claimant's behalf. And it said that the, at the local level, activists have, been, have had more immediate success to institutional pressure points, while decision makers are often less shielded from criticism and thus likely more likely to yield. This can involve organizations like cities, schools, as well as churches, the military, and even corporations. So the churches, obviously, we have the Catholic Church. And so we have some examples here um, of, of a much more narrowed scope than widespread slavery reparations, which is what we were talking about before. Uh, in 2015, Chicago enacted a reparations ordinance covering hundreds of African Americans tortured by the police from the 1970s to the 1990s. The law called for $5.5 million in financial compensation, as well as hundreds of thousands more for public memorial and a range of assist assistance related to health, education, and emotional well-being. These were uh, direct financial awards. There was the uh, two, the students at Georgetown University voted to create a fund that would raise four hundred thousand dollars annually to benefit the descendants of of those individuals who were enslaved and sold in the eighteen thirties. Uh, that was money that went to charities and other indirect benefits to the descendants. We got plenty of Southern churches, uh, Episcopalian and Presbyterian congregations. Um, have often paid ministers salaries by hiring out enslaved people to neighboring employers. And so there are initiatives to try to compensate those individuals. Um, there was, where was it here? An Episcopalian seminary in Virginia that employed enslaved workers on its campus before the Civil War unveiled a, unveiled a $1.7 million reparations package last fall. And then the Presbyterian in New Jersey, the Presbyterian Princeton Theological Seminary announced a $27.6 million endowment to fund scholarships for descendants of slavery. Uh, and then various cities have done various things for the folks who were in, forced into labor for the benefit of, of those cities. So, so, so Cynthia, if I might, how is, how is that different? Those initiatives, how is that different from operations? Well, I think in those particular cases, we're, we're talking about instances where like a certain city or organization was part was the participant when it came to direct harm. Right. So, you know, and, and, and those things are appreciated, appreciated. And it actually can help as far as like setting precedent on the federal level when it comes to actually paying reparations. And we've also seen examples of how. Uh, local laws, local initiatives, things of that nature were able to kind of drive, be a driving force of, you know, um, a, a federal law going into effect. I, I, I specifically think about uh, same-sex marriage. Uh, oftentimes, like same-sex marriage was, um, you know, enacted in some uh, municipalities and some states before it actually became legal on the federal level. But the thing about it is, is that Slavery itself, the institution itself, was a countrywide institution. You know, it was uh, the the federal government actually, um, you know, it not in so many terms, but you know, it was within it was codified in the constitution of slavery being an institution that the country basically got wealthy off of. But I thought the North fought to, fought to end slavery, Cynthia. I thought the North had clean hands when it came to slavery. Uh oh, uh -oh so glass is going down on the nose. Watch out. <laughs> but, but, that, but that's what I learned in elementary school in sure. the upper Midwest. For sure. Uh, can we not talk about, like, you know, other uh, 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 different uh, uh, Supreme Court uh, decisions uh, where slaves uh, traveled to Northern? Uh, uh, states and cities, and still were not afforded their their talk, um, their you freedom. About, you talk about Dred Scott. Mm. Are you talking about the Dred Scott decision? Mm. Yeah, Johnny wouldn't know anything about uh, legal legal arguments, right? Mm. Alleg allegedly, nor with Kenneth. Nor with Kenneth. Nor with Kenneth. But you right. know, but like, um, as but as far as like uh, a lot of these particular no local initiatives, like my thing mostly is again because like. 
uh, uh, um, slavery itself, the institution of slavery itself was a was a countrywide issue. You know, I mean, the main reason why we had secession in the first place is because the South did not want to give up its slaves. Like it said that we rely heavily on slave labor in order for us to be able to produce our crop in order for us to make money. And now we have this darn uh, abolitionist, darn frigid abolitionist that's gonna come up here and try to tell, take away our guns, I mean, our slaves, and uh, to tell <laughs> us what we, we need to yabba dabba do. And we ain't having it, so we, we gone. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and but the thing about it is, is that like when we're talking about, you know, the slavery, slavery wasn't just, you know, labor that was in the South. We had businesses that were also utilized in the North, like insurance companies, like banks, et cetera, et cetera, that also made money off of slavery, you know, equipment building, shipyards, all this stuff. Like they were all tied into the institution of slavery. And they, and again, and some of those organizations are around, some of them are not, but the federal government is. And right. the thing about it also too, like, especially like when I was like reading off of like the cost of slavery, the the worth of slavery, like, I mean, and if we're, if we're throwing out these particular numbers, like trillions of dollars, all, and I believe that uh, Dr. William Darity actually made this particular argument that if you take the state and municipal budgets all throughout the United States and combine them together, it's like a, roughly over $3 trillion. And that is not going to even be able to, you know, to really pay what reparations would really be right. worth. Mm. And, and I think, uh, Kenneth, I think you had some notes here about that. I, I'm ready to just like go off. I like honestly, please. Because, okay, so when 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 I saw the story that had the the five million dollars from Chicago number, all right, I live in Chicago. Cynthia and I we're we're here in Chicago. Okay, um, I I was like, it just hit me in the head. I don't know why I went right here immediately, but I was like, five million dollars seems like like an insultingly tiny, stupidly low amount. And I was I was like, I wonder how much the city has paid out on police misconduct lawsuits lately. And what I found was um, some great data journalism from the Chicago Reporter that showed that Chicago's paid out more than half a billion dollars in police misconduct lawsuits since 2005, okay? And there's something in common here with what the Catholic Church is doing, okay? So I, in the show notes, I'd, I'd said that the Catholic Church is this international cartel that enables and protects pedophiles while sitting on an incalculable pile of wealth. And like I said, it's like the dragon, like Smaug from The Hobbit on his, on his treasure hoard. The, the Catholic Church doesn't even feel $100 million going out the door. That's nothing. That they have to raise, that they're going to raise. It's nothing. It's yeah. nothing. It's nothing to them. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, $5 million from the city of Chicago and acting like that is in some way reparations is pathetic. It's insulting. It, the city doesn't even feel that. That's nothing. So I it, it's like all of these institutions are paying out these piddly little bullshit sums to be like, Okay, just like just be happy with that. We're doing something, but but the but by doing this, they're they're avoiding taking the issue of reparations seriously. Yeah. Um, they're they're avoiding taking meaningful action. I mean, we should we should feel it. Um, I mean, in a city like Chicago too, where I mean, for people who are like, well, slavery was a long time ago. Look, like, look up redlining. Look at look at how post war America, how you had had home buying policies that were basically the foundation of wealth creation for the modern middle class and how black Americans were just straight up excluded from that, how there were federal policies. The FHA would not insure and secure loans for black Americans. So they just couldn't get in on that while white Americans are doing it. So, I mean, this is, this is not like ancient history. So when like, I, honestly, like, <laughs> like $5 million for Chicago, that, that is yeah, like, that's nothing. That's people nothing. should be mad about it. That and should it, make people more mad than nothing. And it's yeah. not even, and it's not even, it is not even to like tie. And it's basically that $5 million was because of one man who decided to torture a whole bunch of people into confessions into crimes that they did not commit. That That's just that part. Right. And, and we're not even going to talk about, 
even some of the complicity of the city itself in some of the particular oh, practices that we're still in today. And and I know that we're going to even bring up Evanston, you know, because like they're they're supposedly the first city that actually um, uh, enacted rep a reparations program in the in the in the United States. And even that's not reparations. You know, they're talking about doing a twenty five thousand um, dollar grant for qualified homeowners or ones who want to buy a house who can prove that they, they, they've been discriminated against uh, or descendant of, uh, of people who were discriminated against to, for our homes between 1919 and 1969, you know, before the Fair Housing Act actually was enacted. And, and Kenneth, you've been to Evanston, right? Yep. yep. Okay. And nice. you... Yeah, I can't afford a house in Evanston. No, no, none of us can. But one of the things that is very interesting, if you all ever went to Evanston, Evanston is a, a very rich suburb, depending on where you are yeah, in the suburb. Crazy segregated. It is extremely mm. segregated. And the segregation is like literally two to three blocks away. And it, it, the, the historical, the historically um, black end of town is uh, considered the fifth ward. And when you first like drive into Evanston, you know, specifically from uh, Lake Shore Drive, uh, and then, you know, go around the bend, you see these houses that are, that usually start at like about 450 to $500,000 starting. Okay. All those, all those movies in the eighties where like white girls in high school got to you know go to prom with the guy with the Porsche, they filmed all those in Evanston. All those John Hughes movies, gotcha. were Pretty in Pink. Yes, yes. Pretty in Pink yes. was filmed in like in all those Evanston. movies were filmed right there. If you've seen Ferris Bueller, you know what Evanston looks like. Exactly. However, when you go across, but when you go across a, a couple a couple of streets into the Fifth Ward. It's right. a whole different you dig, okay? Right. And and you know, and the thing about it is, is that even people who were even qualified, first off, they're setting aside four hundred thousand dollars for this particular fund if you qualify for a home or if you already have a home, okay? Four hundred thousand dollars set aside for a twenty-five thousand uh, dollar grant means that about only sixteen people gonna be able to take advantage of it. How yeah, the fuck is nothing. that reparations? It's nothing. Yeah. How it's in nothing. the motherfuck is that reparations? It's not. And when you, know? you look, no, at, it's when you look at it's a numbers, band aid when you need to be getting out the uh, you know you need to be getting out the trauma kit and the the uh, the stitches. Well, and when you look at the numbers of of like where reparations polls with various demographic groups. Among white Americans, it's like 85% oppose reparations outright. Mm. They just don't want to, they just, they just like, get that away from me. Yeah, they um, don't even want to talk about it. And right. it's it's one of the most, if not the most obvious, like, ethical questions for the United States to face. It's like, we all benefit from this, you know, incredibly wealthy country that was built on the backs of slaves and the misery of black Americans for generations. Can we do something to make them whole? Hello. Yeah. It's like absolutely. And 85% are just like I don't want to hear about it. It's like And you know that uh that kind of ties into what I had uh written here for for my take on this. Um so uh 10 years ago I was 18 and a Tea Party Republican and very proud of that fact. Um I'm not going to identify my current political affiliation but uh that's what I used to be. Uh, the discourse on that side of the aisle, from what I can see, hasn't changed since then. Um, they paint it as just a handout from the government um, to uh, supposedly um, people who are both lazy and have multiple jobs that don't pay enough. Like, I don't I don't fully understand the picture they're trying to paint. It's more of a picture of a straw man than anything. But really what it is, is it's the the equalizer that we need to um, to kind of help our society heal from uh centuries now of of turmoil um around uh uh just how um, racial groups get along or don't get along in this country and the reason the reason for it and ultimately it all ties back to chattel slavery um so if i can just read a couple um statistics here from this uh site it's from the brookings institute um it's a nonprofit um uh, educational institute we're gonna have the link down in the description um but yeah the uh the black white wealth gap um, the net worth, I believe, uh, between um, black and white families is uh, 6.7 times greater. Uh, that's the average uh, net wealth of a white family is $929,800. And 
average black family wealth is one hundred and thirty eight thousand one hundred dollars. I mean, that is a such a stark difference. And that's and, not and that's hard assets. That's right. hard assets. OK, we're, we're not even talking about liquid. You know, some of the you know, some of the other statistics that come out is that black Americans only have only hold. 2.6 percent of the wealth in this nation yeah. while white american hold about 90 percent of the wealth in this nation and, and meanwhile I, black folks make up what is it 13 percent of the population yes we we yeah. make up 13 percent of the population but hold less than three percent of the wealth we don't even hold the wealth as a compensatory to population you know yeah and we can definitely correlate a lot of these particular issues when it comes to lack of wealth and, and even another thing, like, you know, uh, which is um, also a fallacious argument to say that all they all just need to get scholarships and go to school. But when you look at, uh, again, if we look at statistics when it comes to that, that um, a black, the black medium household with a bachelor's degree is roughly about $70,000 a year. The medium household income for a white family without a high school diploma is about $85,000 a year. So even if you are going into uh, further education, you know, extending your mind and also giving yourself some more uh, uh, platitudes when it comes to opportunity, <laughs> what they no, told really. us. No, what they told us, right? But the thing about it is, is that that's not even going to be a guarantee for you to be able to close the racial wealth gap. So, so that, that's that's where my question comes in. All right. It seems like in order to adequately compensate, although there can never be <clears throat> adequate compensation for something that happened for hundreds of years, gross inhumane treatment of people, but to other people, unless it's a fabulous amount of money, because it is a fabulous amount of money, it's going to be a small amount of money, more than likely. And it's not going to do enough to close that economic and social uh, political power gap, right? And then what is, what's going to be excused? Well, we gave you reparations yeah. and now what? Now so it's right. all on you. The worst right. thing that could happen would be to just like, yeah, a blanket one time payment of something as of like, I mean, Frank, let's just call it what it is. It would be white America, like assigning a dollar amount to the, the generational <laughs> oppression of black Americans, cutting a check and yeah. being like, all right, we're square. We're square. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. And, like, and we're not. And I and I know that Bob, uh, what's his name, Robert Johnson, of uh, the former CEO of 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 BET, was saying, okay, we'll just do fourteen trillion, pay each Black American three hundred fifty thousand dollars, and we done right. And I'm like, no. And, yeah, no. You know, that a good that wouldn't quite be no, the solution it, no it won't i mean even though like i believe in direct payments and we should do direct payments but it's direct payments and and it's going to be an actual it's going to have to be a a, a comprehensive program that actually affects generations okay yeah a, a good book to read about this, and it will be in the show notes below, is uh, William Darity's and A. Kirsten Mullins' From Here to Equality, where they actually go over not only the history concerning uh, slavery, concerning Jim Crow, and even now dealing with mass incarceration and how it has robbed generations of uh, Black Americans of wealth. Um, they go into what an actual comprehensive race, um, reparations program would look like that would not cause inflation you know because like they said this is a commitment that would have to happen for generations it's it's, it's kind of like how you know you pay you got so much money to go into the military budget every year you know it's, well it's and then a rising a rising tide lifts all boats i think is the yeah. attitude there it's it's an investment yeah. into your population right? yeah it should be it should be viewed as community building um, direct payments are definitely should be a part of that. Um, I agree with you on that, but yeah, it shouldn't be just direct payments. It should be a community building, you know, like you said, a comprehensive like package. Mm -hmm. We I could reason... oh, go ahead, Kenneth. Sorry. I think the reason that people in the United States are so uncomfortable with talking about this and don't want to do anything about it is because we like to think of ourselves as moving away from 
how our society was back when it was designed, where you had the labor of this giant group of oppressed people benefiting a privileged few. Mm -hmm. But we're still doing that. That's still America. America is still designed in a way where <laughs> you've got the yep. masses working for the for the you know benefit of of a tiny group of people. Um, and it, I mean, reparations involves a restructuring of how we think about and do society. Um, there, there should be no, there's no reason why, given the amount of wealth and power that America has, why, why we can't do this. It, it is not a, a question of ability. It's a question of, of our will and where we want to focus our attention and who we are as a, as a country, frankly. Um, and, and, and it's, it's, it's a reckoning, uh, frankly, that needs to happen. Facts. I agree. Agree. In in one form or another, we will be dealing with this inequality. And there will not be a putting the genie back into the bottle. I keep saying this to people. Like there are groups of people who are now flexing political muscles that before have been atrophied, artificially <laughs> atrophied. Get with the program or, or get out of the way because it's yep. it's not it's not no one's gonna go back into silence, period. Um, I, I mean, we've been messaging back and forth. Uh, we were originally going to skip this because we were talking so well about the other two topics, but I think we need to cover this just because, um, I don't want to do anything. Uh, we're, we're going to cut out our discussion of, of our looking back, uh, individual, uh, would encourage you to look down in the description. She was an amazing person, uh, kicked a lot of ass a long time ago. Um, but this is, I think, this speaks more to what we're dealing with now. I want to, I really want to talk about the vax, the vaccine problem that's going on right now. Partially, and this might be a selfish move on my part. I had a conversation with my mother the other last week, and uh, just to see how she was doing. It was actually the one hundredth, what would have been the hundredth birthday of my grandmother um, last week. And I was like, Oh, I'll call my mother to talk to her about this. Now my mother is religious. And although she says she doesn't watch Fox and she says she's not a QAnon person, she told me she will not be getting the vaccine. And I said, okay, I'm going to hang up the phone now. And then when I got a flurry of text messages, she said, you know, how dare you do this? How dare you do that? And I'm like, well, that conversation was only going to get worse from that point onward. Talk to me after you've had the vaccine and we can, can pick up where we left off. Let's talk about the vaccine issue, the updates that are going on in the news. Martin, uh, take it away, please. Yeah, there's a, uh, there's a lot going on right now. Um, we have a few articles that we were going to cover here. Um, the main one that I wanted to open by talking about is uh, how Facebook um, has been influencing all of this. Um, the uh, Business Insider article that you can find down in the um, comments I uh, found that a vast amount of its anti-vax con content comes from about only 111 accounts, um, which is very interesting. Um, so it looks like, uh, you know, there's a lot of um, uh, different bot accounts set up and there's a lot of misinformation that's just being fired out there. Mm -hmm. But also Facebook, I've, I've noticed they've been banning some stuff and not banning other stuff. Um, I actually had to make my exit from the platform a few weeks ago just for my own uh, uh, mental health, let's say, or I, really, I just want to say happiness. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, Facebook is definitely uh, spreading a lot of misinformation these days, and um, it's kind of driving the narrative around vaccines. Um, one other thing that I wanted to touch on real quick, because um, there's different strains of anti-vax folks. There's some who just think that the COVID vaccine isn't going to work. And yeah, strains, you like that, Kenneth? I did. I appreciated <laughs> that. Um, and uh, there's some who think that just vaccines don't work in general, not just the COVID vaccine, but like they question any of them. Um, so I wanted to cite a little bit of data here um, from 2019. So, you know, very recent data. We can go back and look at the methodology and all of that. Uh, but this is uh, a, an article from the CDC.gov, or an update, I should say, on the measles outbreak uh, from January 1st uh, to October 1st, 2019. What was that, about 10 years ago now? Um, maybe 20 COVIDs ago? <laughs> 2019, such, such a long time ago. But uh, the, 
the update says um, the two sustained out, uh, outbreaks in New York City and New York State were larger and lasted longer because of a combination of three important risk factors. Uh, one, uh, pockets of low vaccination coverage and variable vaccine acceptance. Um, and that just means as far as people accepting them as, as uh, valid health care, I guess. Um, uh, relatively high population densities and closed social nature of the affected community, something that we're seeing with COVID in cities right now, or we're seeing at least before the vaccine got rolling, and uh, repeated um, importations of measles cases among unvaccinated persons traveling internationally. Uh, it's, again, something with COVID that all countries have been able to restrict, not just America. And that's the thing, too, with that, is we don't want to just single out any one country. We needed to shut down international travel the day it got the day COVID came here, or the day we first had a case. I agree. Um, now, tying vaccines back to all of that, um, I've discussed it with my doctor, and as far as I can tell, uh, I'm healthy enough to get the vaccine, so I look forward to doing so. Uh, living in Florida, however, it's uh, Florida's doing an interesting job rolling out the vaccine. Um, Governor DeSantis, if you're not familiar with uh, his methodology, there uh, leaves a lot of questions on the table. Um, but I look forward to uh, to getting the vaccine in the near future. So nice I'm going to go. I, nice yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. Uh, I, I got some feedback uh, as to my last nonprofit's appearance that I was coming off too one sided. So I, I don't want to do that anymore. Oh, uh, with that being said, um, no. I think uh, I think I want to kick the ball to somebody else here. I wouldn't worry about that too much, Martin. Um, I, I really oh, I'm, oh, I'm not worried, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, I know. Uh, what you know, Cynthia, Kenneth, Kenneth, what do you what do you have on this? Let's I'm psyched. Share I, I'm all signed up. I'm getting my vaccine Friday morning. I'm I, I feel like incredibly lucky. I'm getting that Johnson and Johnson one poke and, and you're done vaccine. Kapla. Um, and nice. uh, I, I just when I when I was reading the story, I just it's found myself work. thinking about how um, it's a good reminder that the the anti-vax people, the, the truly batshit crazy people are a tiny little minority. They feel like they're everywhere because they're so goddamn loud. But <laughs> I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm lying to myself. I tell myself that most Americans can't possibly be that. I, I'll say it, they're, they're fucking dumb. It's dumb. It is dumb. It's dumb. I'm leaning into it now. Dumb. It's anti-science. It's anti-science. Anti which is dumb. Which True. is dumb. Yeah, you know. So... I Okay, forget sorry. about forget about a majority. There's there's numbers. We've got uh, we've got an article in here. We do. Pew research. All oh, right. The pew. The pew. Le the pew research. Let's, let's all gather in the pew. Let's Pepe gather in the pew. pew. Oh wait, no, we can't talk about Pepe anymore. Pepe's gone. No, yeah, let's, Pepe's been canceled. <laughs> Well, Pepe was trying to be taken oh, back cancel. by his creator. Whatever. But no, but let's go back here. Yeah. Let's say in this in this article links in the MF in description. A majority of Black Americans, 61%, now say they plan to get a COVID-19 vaccine or have already received one, yes. up sharply from 42%. Well done. Yes. Um, older adults, 41%, they've already received one dose. Another 44%, they say they definitely or probably plan to get vaccinated. Um, income levels, there's some, there's some differences here. 14% uh, of lower income adults say they've gotten at least one dose of vaccine compared with 20% of middle income adults and 27% of upper income adults. Uh, oh, funny. Strange how that goes. Funny, yeah. Huh? That's a, yeah. <laughs> weird. Wonder, yeah. wonder why that's that way. Huh? In America? In America. The, 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 yes. Bizarre. Los Estados Unidos. Exactly. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, so here we go. Those who do not currently plan to get a vaccine, 30% of the public list a range of reasons why. Majorities cite concerns about side effects. That's 72% say side effects. A sense that vaccines were developed and tested too quickly, 67%. And a desire to know more about how well they work, 61% uh, are reasons why they don't want to get vaccinated. Um but well, yeah. Can I can I just jump in real quick? You know, as, as a person Please. who's been working these these uh, these um, uh, vaccination events, um, yeah, it's a lot of a lot of hours, but it's okay. I'm I'm willing to do it. You know, I, I wrote an article uh, specifically on my blog about 
people, especially like uh, Black Americans who actually had aversions to taking the vaccine, part, partly was the concern about side effects, some of the uh, issues that we have experienced as far as, you know, adverse health care and other historical things like Tuskegee, Henrietta Lacks. We talked about that on one of our previous uh, nonprofit uh, shows. Um, and also, you know, um, even like the experimentation on slave women uh, by the uh, what they call him, the father of gynecology. I can't think of his name right now. But, oh, um, yes. Oh, yeah. yes. So like, so there's a history there, right? And I and I completely understand that. But, you know, as far as like the development of vaccines, first off, these, M, um, these messenger RNA vaccines, the technology has been around for decades. This is not a new technology that has been utilized in order for uh, vaccines to act, for these particular vaccines to be developed. They just took the, um, what they knew about the, this particular strain of coronavirus and they utilized uh, these particular methodologies in order for them to be able to deliver said vaccine in said body, okay? So th that's one thing. So it wasn't like, oh, it took so you, it took us less than a few months to actually get this done. No. And another thing too, there has been so many clinical trials that has been uh, uh, done on the uh, the vaccines that actually have been approved by the FDA. And they're right. all public. All of right. them are public, including what's in the vaccine, whether you're taking Pfizer, whether you're taking Moderna, whether it's Johnson & Johnson, like all the information, including the efficacy rates, what's <clears> in it, all the whole you digs, even when it came to reported side effects, everything is available online. Like it's there, there's, my whole thing is this, I don't want to shut up, maybe. My whole thing is Hopefully this. Hopefully not. <laughs> well, in this particular vernacular, that if, there was such a conspiracy as far as taking the vaccine and it doing something nefarious. I would think that there would be way, there would be a much more a huger, bigger, more uh, seen effort. I'm, I'm having hard times with words to make it more covert that you don't that you don't know what's in it you can't get it or you know like or you're or even if you're seeing like you know all these like horrible things that are happening to people right. i mean and even like when it came to and even going back to like the historical reference when it came to you know adverse health care that you know african americans have received specifically that shit came out it that did. shit came right. out like you know yeah, like this this is yeah, it took a minute, but it came out. So, and like, and and like, you know, like I said, like we, we, I know that like this past weekend, we we vaccinated four hundred people. We vaccinated um, the next uh, previous event. We did a uh, second dosage for about you know four hundred to fifty uh, to four hundred fifty people. We're continuously going to do that, whether they're doing the one shot deal or they're doing a two shot deal, right? And I mean, I had it done. I had both of my uh, my shots, and what I experienced was soreness in my arm and some fatigue and that's it and that is the most reported side effect that people have gotten now have people gotten like you know uh uh more um uh uh, uh more like flu-like symptoms or even like you know some other allergic uh reactions yes but those particular side effects are way 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 less than you know than actually what most of the uh side effects are actually okay, let, you know the, the smaller ones are um, let me break yeah. in here cynthia yes okay because i'm rambling <laughs> we've got an article here from religionnews.com okay and this article talks about as troubling as troubling white evangelicals are the least likely to say they should consider the health effects on their community when making a decision to get vaccinated. Wow. Only 48% of white evangelicals said they would consider the community health effects a lot when deciding to be vaccinated. That compares with 70% of black Protestants, 65% of Catholics and 68% of unaffiliated Americans. And then John Fay, a US historian over at Messiah University. Wait, Messiah? Is that where 
well, who studies evangelicals said he wasn't surprised that white evangelicals seemed least likely to want to take advantage of the vaccine. He said there's a long history of anti-science within American evangelic evangelicalism. Goes back to the Scopes trial. He said that getting a vaccine is a lack of faith. And of course, atheists did the best. Um, I think what it boils down to this Not is... Really. Course. White evangelicals have this attitude, I think, and I'm just going to shit on them right now. I got mine. Go fuck yourself. I don't yeah. give a shit about you. Jesus has my back. You're going to hell. And if I die, I'm fine because I have an eternity of praying and singing hymns to the Lord Almighty for, oh, for, for the rest of existence. Wonderful. Yeah. Sounds absolutely lovely sound to just be in, in servitude for the rest of my life, you know, as yeah. opposed to. What, and, yeah. working, and as much as I love 50 hours a week, and as much yeah. as I love to sing, I even I need to rest my not, vocal folds not here sing and there. well because you don't have you don't have heavenly perfect vocal cords. I, you, yeah, okay, gotcha. Uh, Outcast There's X did a great video about that recently. There was some preacher man, some dude talking about how it's not actually going to be boring in heaven. I don't know if anyone caught that one, and then <laughs> X had a had a good laugh. So again, Outcast X, friend of the show, nonprofit intimate. Uh, check it out if you want to. Kenneth, what's your what's your take on there's, this? You got some more stuff? A, there's a logic here. There's a like, why would you give a shit about COVID devastating your community when Jesus is going to be back any day now? Okay, uh, Biden's the Antichrist, obviously. The rapture is imminent. Clearly. Okay, this Clearly. whole world is going to be destroyed anyway. Who cares? That's the, I mean. I was hearing that stuff back in the 90s. People were talking about this with Bill Clinton being the Antichrist and stuff. And the Left Behind books came out and everyone's yep. looking forward to just being raptured up. So who cares what happens here? Why would you care about things like health policy or environmental yeah. policy no. or anything? Yeah, you're getting any you? day, any day now. Why? Uh, what, the, Christians, what about... the Christians were the real nihilists in the end, you know, who would have who thunk it? I think I that we, we covered that on another nonprofit's uh, about I also, social oh, yeah. nihilism as well. Yeah, yeah and well, I love this stuff. With the conspiracy thinking too that, that Cynthia was touching on too, because it's like I, I know I know so many of these people. When when you said the thing, Johnny, about how people are saying they they're not taking the vaccine because they want more information, they're not looking to the CDC for more information. They're looking to their friend who dropped out of community college and sells body shaping lotion for an MLM. That's that's their source on Facebook. That's the the quote unquote research that people are doing. I've done research. Their vaccine. I've done re you know, yeah. I, I've, I, 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 I've studied uh, evolution and, you know, yeah. I, there's nothing there. Well, I when the Flat a, Earth YouTube channel posts another video on vaccines, then I'll know the truth. I had what? a whole argument this morning. I'm not going to say with who, but I had a whole argument this morning with uh, this uh, lovely person who decided to tell me I'm not getting the vaccine and I'm not vaccinating my child. And because I take CMOS... And elderberry and <laughs> and mecca lecca high mecca hiney ho and <laughs> and so I'm fine and I'm I just like that. you know what here's the thing being a whole vegan as I love to point that out you know that means I'm better than all of you for for purposes of this show we're all vegans right now go on <laughs> right oh yeah I know that's true like what we what yeah we could it's part of the atheist uh, the atheist movement now we've just mm -hmm. absorbed veganism. Mm -hmm. For purposes yep. of this show, right? We haven't now, consumed we're all veganism vegan though, because you know. Yeah, it, be exactly. Vegan. <laughs> to, to, to the point. Anyway, wow, well, my point. <laughs> as much as like you know, like I, I believe in like uh, as far as like uh, being healthy and and eating and eating proper foods and taking your vitamins and and getting vitamin D and going out into the sun and, and you know trying to you know be as plant based as possible. None of that is going to protect you from COVID nineteen. I just want to get that out there. Yeah. That's going to be fun to edit for the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> just dumb, just, just it's just like Dunning-Kruger. You're good. You're good. <laughs> we, should, we should just change the name of the whole, the whole, we're just the United States of Dunning-Kruger. That's, that's yeah. just where we're at. True. Seriously. United States of, I think I saw that on Facebook once. <laughs> that means it's an authority. That means it's yeah. true. Yeah. I saw, I saw an Instagram post, so that means it's real. Facebook.com slash freedom eagle says. Yeah. Well, there's, 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 I mean, I mean, the, the, the long thread of anti intellectualism in America, I mean, that, that shit runs as deep as racism does. It's, uh, 
it, 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 Isaac Asimov had a hand to hand, like this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was yeah. Isaac Asimov had a quote that went something like, "American individualism is this idea that my ignorance is just as good as someone else's knowledge." I'm, I just <laughs> I just butchered that quote, but it's something like that. I'll just make that one mine now. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we got work to do. We got work to do. That's that's that, all that, there is to it. Yeah. The fourth law of stupid humanic botics there. I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I found one article. I don't know if I shared it with you. Uh, I'll put it in the description for everybody to look at just to give you some perspective. People gave up on the flu pandemic measures a century ago when they got tired of them and they paid the price. Um, this is in the conversation.com and it looks back at the 1918 flu and how Spanish it's flu. exactly oh yeah that's right yeah that started in like kansas yeah it started right. in, exactly <laughs> kansas right. apparently is yeah. where they traced I, it take to. that king juan carlos a spanish guy all right yeah. spanish for now. Okay. um but it's the same garbage that we're facing today now this is a little off from the vaccine topic but it's the same we're, we keep coming back to this and as as a person who's helping put together the different articles we talk about on the show it's hard to not talk about the same shit because it keeps mutating. It really does. There's new fractal perspectives of stupidity and closed mindedness. But look, theater and dance hall owners complain about their financial losses. You know, hard to do the, not even in Charleston, what were they doing? They were doing some, you know, pre jitterbug dance moves in 1918. Something the clergy. Ragtime. Rag rag yeah. I'm watching uh, Babylon Berlin right now. Check it out if you want to see a good show about the 1920s in, in the Weimar Republic. Anyhow, clergy bemoan church closer, closures while offices, factories, and in some cases, even saloons are allowed to stay open. Officials argue whether children are safer in classrooms or at home. Um, people are refusing to use masks. People are refusing to, to participate in the science. We haven't advanced in so many ways as a species since that time, but yeah. it's not through a lack of a very vocal group of people trying to drag us into the future. I, I, I've said this before, I don't know if I said on the show, but you know, humankind went to the moon. Yeah, yeah no, 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 no. The smartest engineers <laughs> got us to the fucking moon and the rest of us were eating TV dinners and arguing about communists uh, under our beds while that was happening. Um, this is it. I mean, I am disappointed that my own mother is amongst the people who wants to know more about the vaccine from who knows where she gets her news from someone in her, in her neighborhood, I'm sure, but we've got to just keep on persisting, keep on making this information publicly available, keep on having conversations and yes, people on being patient and walk people through the process, walk people through how careful, how how expedited this process has been, not in the testing, but in the whole scientific community being bent toward one goal with money flowing from the, the government coffers to make it happen. Um, I, I we have to stop. We just have to stop. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I you know we we didn't do any justice to to our our looking back. Uh, individual uh, will you know, again look down into the description, read all about her. Her her name was Marilla Marks Ricker, and she was an amazing person who applied to be the ambassador to Colombia before women were allowed to vote. Um, but um, I want to have you on again, Kenneth. I promise I'll have one less article. I promise we'll bite off something smaller than reparations and racism. Um, would would you come back? Would yeah. you come back if I if if we do that? I would love that. All right. Final thoughts, Martin. Final thought. What do you got? Well, my final thought was listed after Cynthia's, and it said what Cynthia said. <laughs> so, <laughs> Cynthia, final thought. What didn't what you say, my, Cynthia? What, what do you got? What was, what was my final thought? Hold on, let me scroll real quick. I know, I know, y'all. Wait, right, I'll know. read yours, and you read mine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, Cynthia. you read mine. Yeah. The United States should pay reparations to the descendants of U.S. chattel slaves, slavery, and end racism and white supremacy. Damn right. And get yep. your vaccine. Okay. Get your vaccine. And also be good to your fellow humans. 
Yeah. Okay, so Cynthia doesn't get to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, she told me to read it. Kenneth, what do you got? Kenneth, Kenneth, what do you I got? Just, Come on, what's your I final just, thought? I think this whole most of humanity lacking critical thinking skills and basing their lives on faith-based religious dogma thing isn't working out. That's 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 maybe it's just me, but that's where I'm at. Yeah, it's not sustainable. I think you're right. Can I, uh, can I add this one more thing? Cynthia, make I'm it really so quick because 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 uh, Jason is about to kick our keisters. I know the blood of Jesus does not work. Fair enough. Look, there you go. Uh, we had a good time here. We always do. And we're going to continue our conversation in, in our little chats, in our little videos and our little messages back and forth, which we do all week long. I'm so happy to have Kenneth with us today. Cynthia Martin, of course, uh, staples of the show. Look, if you like what we're doing, tell us if you, if you like it done in the comments, join us on the fan discord, join us at the fan Facebook Support us on Patreon, Amazon, Smile if you want to. Um, we will be here next week, and uh, we look forward to uh, talking about more topics that are just frustrating and fascinating at the same time. Thanks a lot. See you next week.